to be your subscribers and everybody else in the remaining social networks. He's the Dark King, and today we're going to do another let's watch of Death Battle. Today is Android 18 versus Captain Marvel. So, the super powered blonde ladies of their respective series. And uh, the previews were quite interesting. The fact that Captain Marvel can absorb energy puts 18 at a disadvantage, meaning if 18 is going to win, it's going to be physical power alone. And maybe. There's a possibility, though a smaller one. Anyway, the disclaimer, the preferred criticism perks, and as such is protected under the laws fair use, I have no interest in any kind of copyright shenanigans whatsoever. So, without further ado, let's do this. And but Sloths, Pizza, Chaos. This is Battle Sloths 2025, The Great Pizza Wars. The all-new twin-stick shooter from Rooster Teeth Games. <laughs> Customize your sloth with Neat. over a thousand unlockable hats, then step into the arena and battle because, for course. pizza and glory. Four game modes, 20 different weapons, a variety of maps. Sloth pole dancing? Battle Sloths has something for everybody. Available now on Steam for PC, Mac, and Linux. Just click the link in the description below and make sure you choose the boomstick hat. <laughs> okay, that's funny. So. I love a powerful woman. Even better, one that keeps getting stronger and stronger. And today, we've got two of them. Android 18, the deadly cyborg killer from Dragon Ball. And Captain Marvel, the hard-hitting, high-flying Avenger. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. It is gonna be fun, if nothing else. In the age 763, peace had returned to the Earth. Unsung heroes, led by the Super Saiyan Goku, had saved the world from an evil galactic tyrant. Everything seemed pretty hunky-dory until a mysterious time traveler showed up out of nowhere with a grave warning. In just three years' time, two deadly androids would rise up and ravage the Earth, all while wearing the mark of the long-forgotten Red Ribbon Army. This sounds like it's gonna get complicated real fast. To be brief, the Red Ribbon Army was the greatest military force ever known even greater than the Earth's entire armed forces combined. Until a tiny monkey child named Goku strolled through and wrecked their shit. Dr. Jiro, founder and lead scientist of the Red Ribbon Army, held a grudge against Goku for over 20 years. Like any mad scientist hellbent on revenge, the good doctor got back to doing what he did best. Building murder bots! And Basically. so he designed some of his deadliest creations to date. Android 17 and Android 18. Though Android isn't entirely accurate. 17 and 18 were actually humans once, siblings even. So that makes them cyborgs, not androids. You'd think a doctor with Giro's prestige would know the difference. Eh, I'll just talk about the classic case of revenge madness. That happens to the best of us. Android 18's real name is Lazuli, which sounds like some sort of Italian pasta dish. No wonder she kept the name 18 after brutally murdering her maker. Yeah, Android 18 and her brother were pretty unruly and a force to be reckoned with. Jiro, even with his own cyborg body, didn't stand a chance. With nothing better to do, the twins set off to ravage the world as predicted. But this time, something changed. After witnessing the compassion of the heroes, including a bald, vertically challenged martial artist named Grillin, 18 had a change of heart and joined the good guys. She even wound up starting a family with Krillin. Nice! Give it up for Krillin! Not <laughs> only is he punching above his bracket, but he's laying pipe above it as well. Indeed. Plus, 18 doesn't really age, so that's a serious win. Android 18 <laughs> is an extremely competitive fighter with numerous deadly abilities. Giro's programming stems from decades of military dominance, granting her incredible hand-to-hand -hand combat skills and mechanically enhanced senses for superb situational awareness. And she's got the strength to back it up. This chick can embed a person straight into the side of a cliff with a single smack or shoot explosions out of her hands. She does this by harnessing Ki, a Taoist-inspired life force energy manifested through a person's spirit and vigor. 
With her key, 18 can fire a barrage of energy beams powerful enough to destroy buildings, continents, possibly even planets. Like the finger beam. <laughs> Talk about getting finger blasted, am I right? No. Oh, you know you laugh. Absolutely not. God, what's funny? On the inside? Ugh. Android 18 has dozens of other techniques, such as infinity bullets. I know what you're thinking, but it's not a magic gun with unlimited ammo. It's a stampede of energy blasts which are nearly impossible to avoid. Her photon strike lays waste to a vast area in an instant. She can even use her husband's signature technique, the Destructo Disc. It's a buzzsaw made of pure energy! Why don't more Dragon Ball characters use that thing? He is just as much a defensive tool as well. Android 18 can enhance her strength, speed, and endurance with her energy, greatly surpassing the limitations of her physical body. Oh yeah, and she can fly! Unlike most warriors, 18's energy supply stems from a sort of battery within. This system grants her a continuous and potentially endless supply of ki. She'll never get tuckered out. In fact, one of her favorite combat strategies is wasting time to make her enemy exhausted, then moving in to finish him off. She's making him burn up all his energy and then she's going to attack him. Like many of Dr. Jiro's other androids, it's even possible for 18 to steal her foe's energy for herself by absorbing it through her body. Increasing Wait, her power and nullifying her opponent. Oh. So you can bet she'll always go the distance. Like Rocky Balboa, except, you know, way stronger and way prettier. 18 is tough enough to deflect Goku's Kamehameha attack, even while he's in Super Saiyan Blue form. Also, she can kick hard enough to break Super Saiyan Vegeta's arm. What's Ouch. so impressive about breaking an arm? You broke yours once just by falling out of your chair. Uh-huh, you might have missed the Super Saiyan part there. Vegeta's extremely high key levels improve his body to support an impressive amount of weight. Leading up to the fight, Vegeta was training in 450 times gravity, making his weight about 55,000 pounds. That means the tibia in his leg would be supporting over 40,000 pounds, the equivalent of eight pickup trucks. Damn, I wish I had bones like that. I could fire so many bazookas and never have to worry about falling down. On top of that, she's able to use her constant supply of ki to easily match the speed of a Super Saiyan. We've previously established that an ascended Super Saiyan can fly approximately 340,000 miles per hour. So it's reasonable to believe 18 can do the same. Damn. Man, this ki stuff is seriously awesome. Maybe I should start meditating or something. Do you even know how? Yeah, all I gotta do is get drunk and sit on the floor crisscross applesauce style, right? Easy. Sure. Anyway, just like Vegeta, Android 18's key allows her to survive serious blows. She's even tanked the full brunt of a Super Saiyan key blast, capable of obliterating an entire building without a scratch. Can't say the same for that sweet ass jacket. Yeah. Man, 18 is awesome. Awesome? Yes. Unstoppable? Not at all. Android 18 is unfortunately susceptible to a number of weaknesses, including her own programming. Fearing her unruliness, Jiro designed her with a remote shutdown system in place, one that both he and Krillin's friend Bulma were able to exploit. Wow, so this little thing will stop them, huh? On top of that, 18 has a reputation of being cold and apathetic. Although this is mostly just a guise, as she's always ready to defend her friends and family from threats. She even joined Goku, the man she was originally programmed to kill, for an interdimensional tournament bent on saving the universe from annihilation. It's safe to say the Super Saiyans are not the only blondes protecting the planet. Believe me, when she gets that look in her eye, you better hold on to your Dragon Balls. I know I'm being hard on you, but it's the only way you'll learn. Okay, so... Captain, Captain Marvel, Marvel has had many ah. names in her career, but when she was born, she was simply Carol Danvers. Carol grew up in Boston and joined the Air Force to pay for college. She quickly flew to the top of their ranks before moving on to the Air Force Intelligence. Then she joined NASA. Damn, is her superpower just having really Not badass bad. jobs? Wonder if she could give me a recommendation. Not bad at all. Working at NASA was pretty cool until aliens attacked. Carol got caught in the middle of a massive battle between the Kree aliens and a Kree superhero named Marvel, known to the world as Captain Marvel. Well, wait. 
Captain Marvel's secret identity is Marvel. Somebody forgot to read Superheroes for Dummies. <laughs> anyway, during the battle, Carol got stuck in a machine called the Psych Magnetron, which exploded. Luckily for her, this was one of those explosions that turns you into a superhero. The energy from the blast merged Carol's DNA with strands of Marvel's. She developed an extra Kree brain lobe and gained most of Marvel's powers, transforming her into a new dynamic superheroine. Except she didn't even realize it at first. She'd just black out at random times and wake up to hear about a new suspiciously blonde superhero. Hey Wiz, maybe I have a superhero side like this. I mean, I black out all the time. Boomstick, you don't have powers. You have a problem. Throughout her adventures, Carol went through several phases of superhero titles. First Miss Marvel, then Binary, then Warbird, then Miss Marvel again, until one day, Marvel died. Here's to you, Marvel. To honor her fallen friend, Carol Danvers took up his mantle, becoming the brand new Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel is unbelievably powerful with superhuman strength and incredible durability. She learned how to fly planes in the Air Force, but now she could fly herself and super fast. Speaking of which, through her time with the Air Force and as a member of the Avengers, she's received years of quality combat training. Not only can she hit hard, she can fire powerful concussive blasts of photon and stellar light energy from her hands, as well as create energy fields. As if all that weren't enough, Carol can open up an extra can of whoop-ass by absorbing energy. Absorbing anything from electricity to magic can make her even stronger. With these powers, Captain Marvel has done some pretty amazing things. While training with the Avengers, the combat simulation measured that she could deliver a force of 92 tons almost 10 times the destructive power of a Davy Crockett nuclear missile. She can survive energy blasts to the face and even the vacuum of space for a long period of time. Once she flew from Broadway to the end of the atmosphere in only a minute and 58 seconds. That's a lot of ground uh, sky to cover in less than two minutes. She claims that's her personal record. Now, considering the distance between a New York City street and the exosphere, Marvel must have been flying 247 times faster than the speed of sound. Carol has taken out characters like faster. Vision, punched Iron Man out of his armor, and even survived two point-blank blasts from the Destructor's beam, which has enough power to punch holes through an Imperial Kree starship. And that's not even the height of her power. If Marvel absorbs enough energy, she can access the powers of binary, a form she took after losing her powers, getting lost in space, and being experimented on by aliens. Long story. As binary, she can tap into the power of a white hole and generate star levels of energy. And her hair's on fire! Were you even listening? That's like the least interesting thing about it. <laughs> Says you! Look at it! Binary was an extremely powerful form, capable of wiping out entire fleets of enemy ships, but one that Captain Marvel does not have easy access to. She initially lost the form after expending all of its energy, and is unable to reach it again without absorbing a massive amount of interstellar energy, such as the infinite energy from a gravitational field of a black hole singularity. She's too stubborn to just give up, though. She's stubborn to a fault, even rushing headlong into situations while ignoring advice from wiser, more experienced friends. Like the time she started a civil war between superheroes, or when she completely ignored her damaging addiction to alcohol. Uh, wow. Yeah, Carol is a badass with a hell of a lot of power. But if Tony Stark, of all people, thinks you have a drinking problem, you should probably listen to him instead of trying to fly into space while completely wasted. Yeah. Regardless, Captain Marvel is a seasoned hero with a record that most would be envious of. Hell, she's such a pillar, she's named after the publishing company itself. <laughs> now, the question is... Anybody else? That's the question. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, it's time for some scrumptious blue apron. Ugh, again. Anyway, here's the end. So, like I was saying, the question. Can Captain Marvel go binary? If she can, I don't think they can stop her. I mean, 
she can't blow up planets, but that's not star level energy. They both can absorb energy to, you know, certain levels. So, here's the deal. 18 is faster and, theoretically, stronger on the base form. But if, during the battle, uh, Captain Marvel goes binary, yeah, that's GG, well played, uh, Captain Marvel wins. So, the question is... Will the battlefield have uh, a source of enough power for that? Otherwise, if not, well, 18 will simply out lesser, and that will be that. Uh, punch through a gut, ripping out her heart, or whatever messed up stuff these guys came up with. Anyway, let's see if my prediction holds true. Let's scroll. is coming with me. Give me a break, lady. I've been looking for that thing all day. Don't make me hurt you. Yeah, good luck with that. Fight! Time to clean up then. Surprise! Thanks for the energy. I can take whatever you give and dish it back twice as hard! enough? What? Probably not. Surprise! I can do it too! Ah! So, it does that a crushing blow. Captain Marvel may have been one of the Avengers' mightiest warriors, but she couldn't stand up to the impressive power, speed, and expertise of Android 18. First off, the numbers don't lie. When it comes to yeah, speed, like Carol's best record put her in just under 200,000 miles per hour, but 18 could move over 100,000 miles faster. Most apparent of all, Marvel's durability and strength feats simply pale in comparison to 18's. The only way Marvel's power could match 18's was to absorb enough energy to reach her binary form. But 18 is no stranger to that technique. There's no doubt she recognized what Carol was doing and stopped feeding her energy. Even if Carol had somehow achieved the full force of binary, that wouldn't have guaranteed a win. I mean, the last time we saw binary in the comics, she was taken down by some alien guns. Guess she's not as good at absorbing energy as she thought. With superior speed, strength, tactics, and endurance, Android 18 simply wore Captain Marvel down until it was time to go in for the kill. Uh, and that's why Captain Marvel lost by TKO. 
God, that oh. was awful. The winner is Android 18. So, I have my binary. Hey, don't Eight. go away. We're about so, to reveal the magic for the next episode of Death Battle. And if you want to see exclusive commentary on this episode, click that little button over there and start a first membership trial. Helps us out a lot. Metal Sonic versus... Oh, this is gonna be fun. Metal Sonic versus Zero. Neat. So, if my grin during the whole battle wasn't enough... Uh, <coughs> proof, I enjoyed it. The 2D sprite fight was kind of awesome. That said, I overestimated the binary form. But as predicted, 18 won. Gruesomely. So there's that. And that, it was a nice fact. On a related note, I'm dying to see the Tournament of Power and making an MVs out of it. Anyway, people, I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, I'll see you around. Ta-ta!